Let's start by creating some new topology for the body. Okay, so this is O2 start, and I'll explain what is in this file. You can open this file or you can assemble your own from the geometry that you're using. So what we've got here is the decimated mesh that we exported in the last lesson. I've got this here as bird creature high. You can see it there. And then I also have this close group. This is basically all of the geometry from the very first course where we built the initial pieces that we took into ZBrush. So if you have those around, you can grab those and bring those in. Any of the pieces, the clothing pieces that you built in Maya and then took back to ZBrush to create the sculpt. Otherwise, you can use this start file as well. Okay, so I've got the high res and then I've just got the raw geometry that I used to build the clothing in that initial first course. And we'll see how we can use that a little bit later. So in this first lesson, we need to figure out what we're gonna make one piece. So for me, the jumpsuit is very skin tight, right? And we've got the body here. So what I've done is gone ahead and combined those objects into one mesh. If we look under a bird creature, you can see this body high. So if yours are separated, all you have to do is select each one, go to mesh and combine to combine those into one object. That way I can come in, take the clothes, hide the clothes, go ahead and I'll hide the horns and the head. And if we look at this, we can actually make this one piece very, very easily. You can see we do have divisions of where the skin versus the clothing is, but it's so small that we'll be able to do that with geometry. And so we can make one seamless mesh out of this. Even though the materials will be different, we can separate that out and it won't be a problem. You can see here, I have the sash in here as well. So we're able to combine a lot of different pieces into this one mesh. So how do we create the low res geometry using the high res mesh? We can use something called retopology or retopo. And it's very easy in Maya. The one thing that you want to have when you do this is you want to have something for the geometry, the new geometry to stick to. And the way that you do that in Maya is you click on your geometry, in this case, our body high, and we're going to go to modify and we're going to go down to make live. Okay. You can see this also highlights this little magnet right here. And you can see the geometry listed right in this box. So if I turn this off, you can see it's not live or I can click that and turn it back on. So now our geometry is live, meaning that the tools that we're going to use are going to enable us to stick to the geometry. So let's change our interface up a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and over by the channel box, I'm going to click on the next tab down, the modeling toolkit, and I want to use quad draw. Now you can see at the top under transform constraint, the live surface is selected. You can also see that we have symmetry turned on. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. And when we create our initial geometry, I'm only going to create half and then we're going to duplicate it over to the other side. The reason for that is that it's going to be maybe a little bit asymmetrical up here. The most part is going to be symmetrical, but I just like to have it isolated to one side. It makes me feel a little bit better knowing that I only have a few polygons to think about at the moment. Turn on quad draw. There are a lot of different options for quad draw, but let's just look at the basics. So I'm going to come in here and start to click on our object. And you can see it leaves little green dots. If I make four of those and then I hold down shift while I'm hovering over it, I can click to create a polygon. If I click two more dots and hold down shift, I can very quickly start to assemble some geometry. And the nice thing is it's stuck right to the high res geometry. So what I will do is go in and I want to make sure to put edges where we have divisions here. So I want to still be able to see the edge for this. And so you can see, I'm actually seeing that change in elevation there. So I'll make sure to put an edge right around the lip of this. And then we can grab. And if we want to move these, we can just grab and move them. And again, shift will help you go in and make a new polygon. Okay. Now I want to set some expectations here. Our topology is never going to match exactly. And it's going to be really tedious for you to watch me click every single point because we're going to be doing a lot of retopo in this. And so I'm going to kind of show you the areas that I want to do and kind of show you how I would tackle it and then let you kind of fill in the gaps. It'll be okay because the way that substance painter works, it's not going to require us to have the same geometry and the same UVs. 
but I want to be able to show you how to do it, even though yours might not match mine exactly. That's totally fine. So let's go ahead and we'll split this body up into a few uh, lessons. I'm going to go ahead and start with maybe the top. And so I would, you know, kind of come through here and I would leave the areas that you're not sure of until later. You're going to see areas that make complete sense. Like, okay, I know I want to make a rim around this area, or, you know, I know that I want to have points coming around like this. And so you can come in and start to build that. Now, if you actually add something that you don't like, for instance, let's say I actually don't want that in here. You can hold down control and shift and click on that to get rid of it. We could do the same thing on an individual point. So this is a really nice, flexible way of adding geometry. You can see I can grab this and move it. I don't have to worry about moving it off of the surface. It's always going to be snapped to the surface. So I can just slide it around wherever I want it. And the key with this is to get the silhouette, right? So it doesn't matter as much out here what this looks like. It matters more that you're able to get the silhouette because as a game res object, you're going to be able to get this stuff on a map, but we're not going to have displacement maps to work with. So we need to make sure to get our silhouette in the geometry. So make sure that you have the height here. You do that just by making sure you have some points down at the bottom and then some points at the top to make sure you get that silhouette. Okay, and you can come around here and kind of fill that in. And eventually you'll work your way back over here and connect up with this area right here. Okay. If you have a, a curvature and you have a really long polygon, you're going to tend to lose that. And so you just want to make sure that, you know, you get to the high points and the low points that you're able to get that curvature in there. Now in areas like this, where you can see, that this geometry is wanting to flow down the body, but this one kind of wants to flow this way. That's where we can start to make some decisions. So you could come in and fill that in and you can see that starts to give us a triangle right here. So, you know, if you put these in like that, and like that, that starts to give you this open area, which you can then fill in. Now, if you don't want to have that in there, there are other ways that we can flow that geometry in. Okay, we could come in here and start flowing it down this way. Again, knowing that I wanna keep one point right along that edge, start coming down the arm here. I know I want some points up here, so we can start you know, adding those points in here. There's probably one between there, we can start to fill that in. And as you go, you'll just start to to sort of fill these main areas in. And you definitely have the flexibility to go in and delete those, you know, if it's not working for you. Okay. Now we can also come in here and add lines. And so for instance, if, you know, this, if this was too wide, we added polygons too far apart and we actually figured out, oh, I needed a line in there. You can hold down control to add a new edge loop in there and then it'll just add it right in. If you hold down tab, you can extrude an edge out. Okay. And you can see if I extrude this out, if I go close to that one, it'll actually pop it right to it. There are actually a lot of different options. If you open up this keyboard mouse shortcuts, there's a ton of different things that you can do with quad draw. So while you're in this tool, you're able to do a ton of different things in terms of adding geometry. For the most part, I actually like coming in and just doing it manually. It's kind of relaxing. You have complete control over the placement of all of your points, constantly move things around. Now you can also come in with the shift key and you can relax your points. So it kind of spreads them out a little bit. It gives you a little bit more of a cleaner look. Okay, so I'm just come in and kind of fill this out coming up to the top of the collar there. And again, don't go past that, the midpoint. So I would stay, you know, to the right of this point, to the right of the, the point in the front and start to come in and fill out this chest area. Okay. Cause this is going to be pretty easy to do in terms of, you don't have to do too much decision-making You can kind of, you know, pull this down 
There's not going to be too much deformation. But again, on the edges where you see geometry, that's where you'll put your pieces. So you wouldn't necessarily have the edge of this sash hit right in the center of a polygon because we do want to have a, a sense that that is a, a piece that's raised off of the surface a little bit. And then, you know, you can use tab to kind of bring this out. And if you use tab with your middle mouse button, it'll extrude the whole thing. So you can kind of bring that out. And then you could fill this in. And once you get going, it can kind of go pretty quick. But don't feel like it has to be perfect. Fill in a bunch of large areas. And then you can go back, take a look at it. See if it's flowing the way that you want it to flow. And then you can change things very, very easily. So you can decide, oh, well, I don't know where I want this to. Do I want to flow into this, this line or the one on the other side? So you can come in here. We can add another edge loop. We could kind of relax everything out. So lots of different options here. So I would say go in for this lesson and just fill in kind of this front, the chest area, come around to the back. So go ahead and bring your topology around to the back. Again, we're not doing anything different. It's the exact same, just clicking points and, and then moving our points around, okay? You wanna make sure to define the areas around the openings on the jumpsuit, around here. Remember, only on one side. Same thing for the armband, if you have an armband. Some versions don't have that, uh, but if you have that, you can do that. But uh, we'll continue. I'm gonna go ahead and finish the kind of the front and the back, and then we'll do kind of the arm and continue down the arm to the, to the hands. So we'll do that next.